Hi guys, how are you doing? And welcome back. So I've showed you guys in my previous videos how to set up that Fault Warden Password Manager as a self-hosted solution. And that means you don't need a cloud subscription for it. You don't, you're not paying someone to have it set up and have your data in there. You're self-hosting it, you're in charge of the data, you're in control of where the data is stored. It's an amazing tool. I've been using it for years, so is my family. And, um, but that means you need to have a reliable backup. But again, if you have a backup, like I showed you in my previous video, how to set up that backup, that backup has no value if you cannot restore from it. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video, how to restore your Vault Warden Password Manager's database from a backup and how to get all that account information back in case disaster strikes. Let's get into it. So this is my Docker host. This is the Docker host I've been using to set up a Fault Warden Docker container, hosting my password manager. And then I have the Fault Warden backup Docker container running there as well. That is creating uh, backups of the Fault Warden database running in here in the Fault Warden Docker. So whenever I start my Docker host or whenever I start up this Docker container, if I go back, if I click on the Fault Warden backup Docker container, if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see that there are several environment options here. One of the options is to create a backup of my Fault Warden uh, password manager during startup. So that means whenever my Fault Warden backup Docker container is being started, it will immediately create a backup of the Fault Warden password manager's database. So far, so good this is creating the backups the backups are stored on my server and if i go back just for demo purposes the server is the same as the docker host so if i go back using win scp and let me zoom in on this a little bit we can see here that there are backups in the directory this is the directory where i told fault warden to create backups so the latest backup has been created during the startup of the server so what I'm going to do is download this backup file. Let's download this one to my computer because this file should, of course, be available on your storage, on your secure storage um, in your home, on your NAS, for example, um, and not be stored, of course, on that Docker host because, because if the Docker host is gone, your backup is gone as well. We don't want that. So make sure that this backup files, these backup files are being stored in a separate place um, than the Docker host where Fault Warden is running. All right, so I'm going to simulate a disaster. And a disaster in this case is that I have to reinstall my Docker host and I have to restore my Vault Warden password manager's database from the backup file I already have. So the easiest way to do this is go to my containers. I'm using Portainer, of course, to manage my Docker host and I will delete the Fault Warden container. If before deleting, let's check that Fault Warden is up and running. Let's go to my Fault Warden webpage and log in just to make sure that everything here is running fine. Let's see. Yes, I have some information stored here. These are the accounts that I'm uh, protecting using my Fault Warden password manager. So. In this case, it's just for demo purposes. This is a small uh, setup, of course. But in your case, and as time goes by, you will add more and more accounts and um, uh, privacy-sensitive information to your Fault Warden Password Manager. And you want to have that information back. So, all right. So this is my Password Manager. It has two accounts in there, uh, which I'm uh, protecting. So that is fine. It is running perfectly fine. Now, if I delete this, Fault Warden instance, this Fault Warden Docker instance, um, I will simulate a disaster. Um, I will remove the Docker container and remove it. So now I don't have Fault Warden running anymore. So if I go back to the tab where Fault Warden was running, I refresh it. I can see that my Nginx proxy manager is telling me I don't have a valid backend for that. Okay, so now I don't have Fault Warden. And in order to make sure that I don't have the file still in this case on my demo server, I will delete that folder as well. So let's log in using WinSCP 
on this uh, server. Let me just minimize this for a second for readability. All right. Now, if I log into my Docker host, I can see that there is still a Vault Warden folder in the path I'm using in my stack. Remember the Docker stack, the Docker Compose I'm using to provision Vault Warden. I can see that that folder is still alive. If I open that folder, I have a data folder in there. And within the data folder, these are all the files that Vault Warden is using and my password database as well. So I need to make sure that this folder is gone as well because I completely want to wipe uh, everything that Fault Warden has on my Docker host, because that's the only way to, of course, uh, test a disaster recovery in a control environment. So I'm going to del delete the Fault Warden uh, folder as well. This will make sure that that all the files which Fault Warden uses are gone. Now that I have deleted that Fault Warden um, folder, and let's go back to our portainer again. Here we are. Let's go to the stacks because I have the Fault Warden stack there as well. Uh, so that means I can redeploy a Fault Warden Docker container very quickly and open up the stack, look at the editor tab. And in the editor, I can see that everything is, is set up perfectly fine. This is the physical location it will create on my Docker host and map it to the data folder within the container. So that's where I'm going to restore those files. So what I'm going to do is just scroll to the bottom and tell it to update the stack. But instead of um, only updating it, I want it to repool the image and redeploy it. So I will check that and click on update and wait for it to finish. All right, it has successfully deployed that. Let's go to containers and we should see a fault warden container, which is completely empty. It is starting up. It has created a password database, but the password database uh, is completely empty. Um, so let's keep it running until this is telling me it's healthy. Let's wait for it to change and then continue. Now we can see that the state of this of this Fault Warden container is healthy. Let's go back to my browser tab where my Fault Warden interface is. Of course, this is my uh, the, uh, the account information which my browser has um, stored. If I if I want to log in with that account, that was one that was my master account actually. If I want to log in with that, it will tell me it's not possible because it doesn't recognize that username or password combination. I know that this is uh, this will be the case because I've redeployed my Fault Warden container, and I need to restore my password database in order for it to accept me again. So what I'm going to do is go back to Portainer, stop the Fault Warden instance. And wait for it to stop. It has completely stopped. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check on my Docker host. If I minimize this for a minute on my Docker host, if I refresh it, I will see it has created that Fault Warden folder according to the map, the mapping in my Docker Compose. So if I go into that Fault Warden uh, folder, go into the data, and I can see that there are files there already. Uh, these are the default files, of course, which is creating every time you uh, create a new Fault Warden instance. So what I need to do is I have stopped my Fault Warden um, Docker container. So that's stopped. That means that all those files are not in use anymore. So the next thing I need to do is go to my backup. And in this backup, I need to extract the information. Let's extract it. And this is the tar file. Let's accept that as well. Now we can see that the attachments folder and the password database folder, of course, they are in my backup. These all are the files I need to restore. So what I'm going to do is go back to WinSCP and let's minimize this for a second. And in WinSCP, I have that folder. These are the files from my backup. Remember, they are stored in this folder. And now that I know that these files, this is my Docker host, where the default Fault Warden database is, I will simply select these files and say upload and tell it to overwrite. Yes, and do it for all of them. And now it has transferred my password database, my attachments folder, 
icon caches, etc., to my Fault Warden um, folder. And I know that my Fault Warden Docker instance is reading all the files from this folder. So now I can go back and go back to containers in Portainer. And in Fault Warden, I can say, all right, this container, I want to start it. Let's for it to let's wait for it to uh, have a healthy state and then try to log in with my account I had created, as you saw in the other videos. My with for my master password, my master account, I should be able to log in with that again and have those two test accounts in the database. Let's wait for the fall for the Fault Warden Docker container to get healthy, and come back to this. All right, now that the Fault Warden Docker container is healthy, let's go back to my Fault Warden web tab. Now I should be able to log in with this account again, because now the account exists in the database I have restored. So that's the email address and I will enter my master password and it should give me access to my database. Yes, and I am in my password database once again after I've restored the backup and I can see that my accounts are there and I can see all the content from those accounts. And that's the way to restore your Vault Warden password managers database. The, the things that you have to make sure are, of course, that backup file. Make sure that you have access to that backup file in any case. So that in case of disaster, you can just grab that file, spin up a Docker host, create a Vault Warden instance, stop that instance, copy over those uh, backup files or, or those files from the backup, that password database, attachments, uh, etc copy them over and then start up that Fault Warden instance again. And it should give you, once again, access to all the account information stored in your self-hosted Vault Warden password manager. Thank you for watching and please click on the like and subscribe buttons below this video. It will help out my channel a lot. And of course, if you have comments, uh, place them in the comment section. I will try to get to them as soon as possible. And of course, take care. See you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.